chillin'. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going over the M60. I went everybody's head about the bird. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Vietnam Era Gear. Today we're going over one of the most iconic LMGs in human history, the M60. Now this M60 isn't mine. It belongs to one of my favorite people in the world who is near and dear to my heart, Mr. Brandon Herrera. How you doing, man? Good. You've been doing those curls prepping for this video. I have, dude. I've been trying to channel my inner animal mother. My, uh, my admin mother. Your admin mother? Yeah. You see much combat? Seen some on TV. You can talk the talk. Can you walk the walk? You can eat the peanuts out of my PB and <laughs> shit. Well, this is a beautiful weapon piece, sir. I am very excited to get my hands on it and run and gun it for the channel. So I say we uh, start actually running through the jungle. Sounds good. I got a fine Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Hi, admin. I'm dying, admin. I don't want you to die, Brandon. I don't f I'm going to be a good shrimp boat captain, Brandon. Why would you say that, admin? I, I fing hate shrimp. So Brandon, I know you already did a video on this. How did you acquire it? Uh, and then what was it like putting in the work to make it run? So uh, this is actually one of the rare instances of uh, me, a uh, gun broker, buying mm. a random machine gun and actually getting it in and having it run right, right out of the gate. No kidding. That rarely ever happens. All machine guns are always broken all the time or in a constant state of killing themselves. This one is the rare exception. Right. So she's been running pretty good. We probably put a few thousand rounds. You, you've seen we brought it out yeah. to the range days and yeah. everything, and she's just been a trooper so far. This, now, this isn't my first time shooting an M60. I've shot an M60 on a, a couple of occasions, and I always enjoy it thoroughly. And well, that field trip to Cambodia, for that example. That field trip to Laos and Cambodia and stuff we're not supposed to talk about in Call of Duty Black Ops. Oh, that man, where, where you been? I've been looking for you. Hey, not, I've been around. Do you want to help me film the M60 video? Oh, I wish I could. I just got a lot. I love a lot of stuff. No, it's cool, man. Just, uh, thanks for letting me use the range, I guess. I'll see you around, sure. okay? All right, man. Later. Yeah. I'm a busy guy. Pew, 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 pew. The M60 will make you feel safe and secure, but you know what else will make you feel safe and secure? This video is sponsor, Aura. If you ever Googled yourself, you're gonna be shocked at what you find. If you ever Googled myself, I'm gonna be also doubly shocked. Are you constantly receiving spam calls, texts, all this annoying stuff? Well, that's because data brokers are selling your information on the web to a bunch of robo callers and spammers to try and get you to well, essentially separate you from your money. Aura, not to be confused with Aura Kai, the servants of Sauron, Fight me. 
Back on the menu, boys! We'll identify data brokers selling your information and then submit an opt-out form which will legally force them to get rid of your information on that site or at least stop them from sending you stuff. Let Aura handle that for you. Aura also does so much more to protect your family from online threats. It's really easy to set up so you don't have to download several different apps to get things like parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft, insurance, and more. You get everything in one affordable price. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online so you can focus on the other more important important things in life, such as LARPing with an M60. Or is like the little admin in your computer with an M60 defending your online security. So let them do the hard work. Don't let spammers keep using your information. Go sign up with Aura. I have a link that you can sign up with them and you can get a two week free trial going with them. So a big thank you to Aura for keeping the lights on here. Now back to the M60. So CIA operative Brandon and I will go quickly run through the gun manual of arms like in case you do come across an M60 in the wild. Just so happened to come across one and you just need to know how to operate it in the moment. You were causing problems for a small town sheriff by being a grifter. Now you must know how to use the M60. Nothing is over! All right, so typically how to operate this gun real quick. So open bolt weapon system, pull the bolt to the rear, send the charging handle forward. Now your bolt is open and you can load up your rounds that you so see fit. Brass to the grass, put them in there, close the top cover, and you are ready to rock and roll. Very simple operation, but there is an art to, you know, belt-fed weapon systems. You would think that just big gun means a lot of bullets, not a lot to it, but if you actually talk to someone that served in the military that ran a machine gun, they are very technically proficient at their craft, and they are uh, not just about the gun, but they're almost like a, a mechanic of sorts. Yeah. Because they have to make sure that thing, that, uh, wants to vibrate itself apart is gonna stay working when they need it most. So I have a lot of respect for those guys and it's a really cool piece of kit. So on the usage, I will say I, one thing I don't love about the older M60s is that the bipod is married to the barrel. Yeah, not great for barrel harmonics. No, not great for that. And I think even just logistically of carrying around spare barrels, you having the bipod attached is kind of crazy. Not only that, but on the barrels, if you see, if you do the barrel swap on this one, which I'm mm. going to show in a second, yeah, uh, the entire uh, gas block in the front of the gas system mm. is also attached to the barrel. Like everything attaches to the barrel. So if you're doing barrel swaps on this, you're you're carrying a lot of extra stuff that's not yes. barrel. And then you of course have your front sight post, which is also married to the barrel. So uh, not. A big deal but i mean i think of a gun that this is inspired from the mg42 and I, I you know i know why now because if you know how bureaucracies work because an military industrial complex they want to give americans a fair shot to fulfill a new mmg role which i get but when the time like the mg42 or now the mg3 exists i'm like it's really hard when i think about it i'm like it's really hard to beat that mg3 yeah, it's so good, especially for the barrel swaps. Now, it's a lot it's a lot up in the air, right? A lot of preference, but... One thing I do like on the M60 more than I like about the MG3 is the cyclic rate. Yeah, like that slower junk. A little bit more controllable. Rate. Guns a lot more wieldy. I think if they would have chopped down the MG3, it could be a little bit more comfortable to use. But yeah, this is a very wieldy weapon for being what it is as a 30 cal. And it shoots pretty well for a 30 cal too. It is a real easy gun to work once you start to figure it out, but I would say that medium machine guns, you don't want to treat lightly. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. Or treat a light machine gun lightly. I know what you meant. Thank you. All right, so we'll do a quick barrel swap. Bolt to the rear. So uh, let's go through it real quick. So the barrel swap, uh, we've got a lever here that is actually spring loaded. We have to push a button on this side and then swivel that up. And then our barrel and I freely come out of the front the gun. So mm -hmm. something that they chose to do on this, which is similar to a lot of, you know, like AR style rifles, I guess is the, the most common comparison is they have a barrel extension. So the locking lugs for the bolt are actually in a separate piece that is then uh, married to the barrel itself. So mm -hmm. when you swap barrels, you're not having to worry about headspace because the headspace is already predetermined by the barrel and the barrel extension. So yeah. So that back bolt. You can see just how big that barrel is, especially how, how clunky it looks with a fixed bipod to it. So carrying spare barrels around, which kind of is important if you want to keep a machine gun up and running effectively. This can be kind of uncomfortable if you're rolling around in the swamps of Southeast Asia or the, the rainforest that is. So that does not sound enjoyable. Manipulating the dust cover real quick. Pop that bad boy open. You have this little tab over here, this spring. So closing it back up just as easy. You don't need to slap it too hard, but you have this turn little tab gets the top cover up. And then you can see the MG42 inspirations. If you're doing an M60 video, you gotta point this out. Yeah, it's, it's legally required. It's legally required, especially for any sort of belt-fed weapon system, seeing how much that was inspired from the MG42, I should say, with the cloth-feeding style and then the rail. 
with that integrates with the bolt. So it's definitely um, copied some homework. And then of course we have the safety over here. And then here's your safety safe and fire. And there is only full semi-automatic because she is a belt fed weapon system. All in all, very cool gun, very fun to shoot and scoot with. And it has, of course, what we would like to call in the biz, a lot of history. Yes, history. Yes. I was gonna say sex appeal. The Americans at the time loved paper clips for some reason. And as they loved German scientists, so too they stole some ideas from Germany when they essentially made the N60. Oh, fuck. That's not good. No, it's not great. So you want me to play Charlie? Yeah, can you? Who's Charlie? You know, the guy from the in Vietnam. That one guy, Charlie. Yeah, I guess, man. Cool. You're gonna love it. I forgot to mention the buff flat, but this thing comes in pretty useful if you are um, proned out or you're holding a position where you need to keep the gun in your shoulder for a while. Also kind of helps out with reloads. In a kneeling position, you can kind of rest the gun on your shoulder as you manipulate it, so it is pretty cool. Now, Cody and I come from similar backgrounds. We were both beat cops. Sir, get down! Sir, get down! I don't know how much experience you have in the military, because I know you're a private military guy, of running a belt fed. You have a civilian background, but you are pretty proficient when it comes to a lot of weapons, I would say. I dabble. You dabble. So it is always a treat to kind of look at these belt feds and get to run them in a more, I always call it like a window into history when you have some of the warp gear on, when you're carrying ammo, you have to carry a bunch of rounds. I think uh, for every hundred rounds of 762, it's like seven pounds. They get heavy. They get really heavy. So you get a glimpse of the little window of history when you do get to run around this with the gear. So that is a cool little portion. I know you've shot the M60 some. What's your kind of thoughts on it? I love this thing. It's, it's, I think it's heavy enough to where there's like zero recoil. Even, even if you're shooting it with one arm, there's hardly any recoil. I love shooting this gun. It's so badass. Yeah. That sickle crate on it's pretty good. If we're going to, if we're doing a range day or something, or we're taking people out to shoot like other influencers or mm -hmm. people I hate that word, other content creators, whatever <laughs> you want to say. Yeah. And they want to shoot a bell fed machine gun. This is always the one we start them on. The MG3 and guns like that, you know, they're still like, you got to know how to operate yeah. that weapon or else it's going to, you know, the dust flies up. You're not going to mm -hmm. be prepared for it. But this thing, like I, you can let a 110 pound woman shoot this and yes. not have a problem. Yeah. It really is a cool forward thingy design, especially for when it came out. And I know I say that about a lot of guns, especially of that era, but there were some like really advanced that they brought out with this. I mean, considering that they went from like the 1919, a square with a barrel. Oh, it's your little mouth barrel. Talking about brown That's genius. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course I respect it, but I mean, going against what the Germans had in World War II, it's kind of dated. Now nah, it's kind of dated. It's not as slick as this thing would become. Of course, there are the drawbacks that we talked about, such, at least from my opinion, the bipod being attached to the barrel with, along with the front side post. So there were issues there, but this thing would go on to serve a very long life within essentially anywhere there's a conflict and with the US military. So I believe Grantham just did a video on the E6 talking about how there's still military units implementing the M60, which that makes sense. You know, it's a tried and true. So there was this talk, you know, around when these guns were coming out, like there were some mixed experiences from all the vets using them. And I'm curious if they had a uh, a better time on the front end with the gun before they just had the army train ran on them, you know, or as opposed to latter half when, you know, they started to wear and tear more. So you can kind of see that. Yeah, as far as like you talking about advancements on the gun and like some units still using them. Mm -hmm. I mean, realistically, if you had like an M240 uh, Picatinny rail dust cover here that allows you to mount modern optics yeah. and something up front under this handguard to attach the bipod, you know, a little bit more rearward like you were talking about. Uh -huh. This is a modern military arc. Pretty much. It does what you want it to do. It throws 30 cal accurately with a good cyclic rate of fire. There is uh, something to be said about the M60 culturally because there were so many young men that went overseas to use the M60 in that conf. But I remember dating a girl and her grandpa. Dating a girl? Cringe. <laughs> I remember dating a girl. And uh, I we broke up, but I still think about her grandpa because one of the coolest things they ever said to me was like, I was in Vietnam and I loved the M60. And he's like, essentially like, I will kill you if you, if you mess with my granddaughter. So it makes me think of that. Another friend of the channel, Nick, who lets me borrow his MG42 as 34s. He carried an M60 when he was in the army. So you can talk to a lot of guys and the nostalgia for this thing is still pretty fresh. These guns are cool. These guns are very fun. They should be vending machine legal. So, um, I guess vote, vote or rebel harder. I don't know.
So Brandon, I appreciate it very much of yeah, of course, running gun your M6 and getting to do a video on it. I know it's a topic that it's not like, oh no, there's never been an M60 video on YouTube before, but it is, uh, as a lover of guns, it is a real treat to LARP around with it in the setting of Vietnam LARP. So I appreciate that greatly. Well, absolutely. Uh, Cody, thanks for stopping by and letting us murk you for the skit. <laughs> Jim, where can, uh, where can they find you? Uh, typically at the local bar. Chances are you know where they're at. Yeah. So much thanks for watching. As always, stay easy, stay breezy. We'll catch you guys on the flip. Where am I supposed to shoot? Directly where he's standing. You're good. I gotta find Bub Bub. I'm dying, Admin. <laughs> Hi, Brandon. I'm dying, Admin. <laughs> you gotta say, you gotta say, Hi, Admin. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Admin. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's a camera. I want to die either. Damn. You're like, shh. Dude, grab his, grab his nose and put your hand over <laughs> Essentially, all you got to do is, uh, all you got to do. <laughs> the f that one the one messed it up? I don't know. Uh, let me, let me try that again. No, we'll f it. We'll roll with it. It's okay. You seen much combat? <laughs> I actually don't know the other part of that line. You can eat the peanuts out of my. I'm sorry. <laughs> Such a f***ing hard line to say with a straight face now. I'm not bubble gum shrimp. <laughs> Only one way to be sure. <laughs> I'm dying, admin. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The gun, right? Safety off, open ball weapon system. If you actually talk to machine gunners that served in a military to any sort of capacity. On the usage part, I remember... Uh... Oh... Want to show the barrel swap? Yeah, let's do a barrel swap. Well, want to go play with Demo's dog and some peanut butter? Congressman. <laughs> Step Congressman, what... Um, I, at least, I know I said a lot, but... Yes, we're, I'm a good Christian boy for this one. <laughs> kind of. <All right. laughs> Hi, Brandon. Hi, admin. Okay, now I can find I'm that one up that time. <laughs> okay. it'll, it'll come together in post. It'll be good.